Pro Sound is the name commonly given to a Game Boy modification that provides a stereo line level output signal suitable for recording and performing audio, particularly for use with chiptune software such as LSDJ and Nanoloop. It does this by bypassing the headphone amplifier and, in the case of the original Game Boy, providing a much cleaner sound signal from a relatively simple modification process. It's also fairly easy to do this with the Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Color. However, when it comes to the Game Boy Advance, things become a little less straightforward. There isn't actually a lot of information out there about getting a line level sound signal from the Game Boy Advance. And with people like 2XAA releasing incredible new music with Nanoloop and Bad Diode's brand new step sequencer Stepper going from strength to strength, I figured it's high time I did a deep dive into the world of sound mods for the Game Boy Advance and put together a definitive guide of my discoveries. Here goes. Hi and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and in this video I'll be sharing the findings from my recent investigations into Game Boy Advance audio and showing you how to carry out a range of sound modifications to suit a variety of different needs. Advance warning, no pun intended. This video is going to be longer than my usual content but seeing as I'm covering things that I found difficult to locate information about elsewhere, I wanted to go really in depth and try and put together a comprehensive resource for anyone wanting to understand or attempt the different mods I'll be explaining. So first a quick disclaimer, all the modifications in this video are based on my own findings. They aren't perfect, there may be other mods out there that I haven't seen done by other people that might produce better results. If you do find any of those please let me know, I am always keen to learn more. I've already made a video a while back that goes into some detail on pro sound mods but those were for the original Game Boy. Be sure to check that one out if you want to try it, I'll link it up here for you. But what I did on there was for the most part put together from information I'd found online and other people's guides that I'd gathered together over the years. However when it comes to the Game Boy Advance there is still surprisingly little information out there on how you can modify your console for different sound outputs. A number of years ago I did some work with my friend Sam Ray also known as 2XAA investigating the possibilities of a pro sound mod for the Game Boy Advance because we couldn't find any existing guides out there. The eventual mod that we came up with involved identifying the left and right audio signals direct from the CPU chip and wiring those up to a separate stereo socket which was also connected to the audio ground signal. It works but I've always had a few reservations about it. It doesn't achieve the clean sound signal that the Game Boy version of the mod does. The volume dial needs turning down to prevent sound coming out from the speaker. It's tricky to get the new socket in place and the cables can sometimes get in the way when you're trying to use it. I've been playing with bad diode stepper software quite a lot recently but when it comes to syncing with other hardware or playing through a speaker it's clear that the headphone signal is a bit too quiet so I wanted to modify one of my consoles for this specific purpose. Seeing as I was modifying one of my favourite consoles this beauty here with the original purple shell I figured it was high time I revisited the theory behind this modification process and investigated any further opportunities to refine or improve it with something altogether new. How did I get on? Let's take a look. So I've been playing a lot of Stepper recently, which is a music creation software for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. And as of the time of recording, version 1.4 has just released. Now, in addition to being able to play Stepper on a Game Boy Advance, you can also play Nanoloop, uh, which is another music creation software. And with the caveat of having the start and select in the wrong place, you could also use LSDJ, um, which is looks awesome on this screen. You've got a slight issue of your start and select being in the wrong place, but again, it's a cool software. So all of this got me thinking about sound out because the sound from the headphones is not great. Now there's loads of mods for the original Game Boy uh, in terms of the sound and there's other ones for the Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Color but it kind of goes by the wayside when it comes to the Game Boy Advance. Now of course the SP doesn't have any sound out at all and I've done a modification for that but in terms of pro sound, in terms of not just attaching a headphone socket, in terms 
of you know instead of using the headphone socket having an actual stereo line out when it comes to stepper if i'm playing through a speaker or if i'm syncing with other software there's a big discrepancy in terms of the sound levels so pro sound on a game Boy advance is something i've done a long while ago with my friend sam what we did was we positioned a socket here we used one of these sort of sockets this feeds through from the inside of the shell and then this nut fastens on on top and it'd be positioned around there more recently i've got hold of of these sort of smaller profile plastic sockets and figured out that you can just get that bit on the inside so i did do a little practice go with that and you can kind of position it like that which is quite nice but obviously that's a separate socket to the one down here this is for your headphones that would be for that now this is where i've been as you can see experimenting with all sorts of different outputs and inputs and things to try and test things out and even have a switch so i can swap between um the headphone socket and instead of having a separate socket like that it sends a signal from there to there now to switch it I needed to try and find somewhere for the switch and I have looked everywhere this poor console here I've been cutting sections out here there and everywhere um, but what I've actually found in the end is actually inside the battery compartment is the best spot but we'll, we'll come back to that in terms of sound and how it works we've got two key areas we've got our actual headphone socket here we've got our speaker of course so there's our two speaker connections here but from our headphone socket we've got five pins okay so essentially what we've worked out is you've got the left and the right signal here and this is the audio ground so it's basically these three that you're dealing with now in terms of the actual sound we've got the volume dial here we've got the main cpu here what we originally worked out was that this is your kind of system on a chip so although you think of a sound chip this is the main chip that has the sound chip built into it this is kind of how the sound goes so pin six and seven on here that's like the right signal and the left signal now they will actually trace across to this point here so you get so1 and so2 so that's like your direct raw left and right channel straight from here so originally when we worked it out we would connect the left to so2 and the right to so1 and the ground to this point here which was like the audio ground that's what would connect to, to these three points and it worked quite well there was a bit of noise and things like that but no one else had done anything so that's that's pretty much what we settled on now what i've ended up doing is is exploring a little bit more in detail what all these bits are here now on the back of this what you've actually got is that component there okay which is labeled as u6 and that is the headphone amplifier so where you've got u6 are in there that's the signal that's taken into the headphone amp and then u6 are out there is the signal out from the headphone amp where you've got a sound connection if you follow the trace you'll find an em which is uh, an electromagnetic filter to get rid of any unwanted additional noise and then also a resistor in line with that to again just clean up the sound quality a bit so what i wanted to do with a new mod is try and use this because what this does is it cuts out the sound to the speaker which is kind of cool and also use whatever i can to improve the sound quality while still bypassing this amplifier so right out from the amplifier goes here then it goes through the resistor through the filter to the signal point what i want to do is go straight from the so1 or so2 but then through the resistor through the filter and then to there to get a better quality signal so a switched option so you've got so1 for instance will swap with the pin 15 on the amplifier so you can either go from there or there and do that you swap just after r19 and you can swap those alternatively for the other signal for the left you've got pin 13 uh, so2 you want to swap between those two just after r20 so that was kind of my, my theory now here's the thing we've got three options okay this is like your traditional pro sound instead of using this one we are using one of these um, because it's got the neat little end as i showed you before it gives quite a neat finish it's quite fiddly to cut and drill but like that sitting in there gives quite a neat finish if i move the motherboard out 
you'll be able to see that that requires a bit of hot glue to stick it in place and then you just wire all your stuff up you can simply just connect directly to so1 so2 and this we did traditionally use that one as audio ground but there's another little point on the motherboard here which might be a little bit neater so you can use so1 so2 and audio ground that's your audio ground so that'll connect that's your left so that'll go to so2 that's your right and that'll go to so1 and if you just simply wire that up with those three pins to those three points then you've got the sort of traditional option which is you, you just your dedicated socket then we get on to option two which is the same kind of thing but it actually uses this socket and makes use of this socket and the good thing about this is it's got this connection here which when you plug in the socket it cuts out the sound to the speaker which is quite good you don't have to kind of dial down the volume because the thing about having the so1 and so2 is you don't have any any volume control so this one however if you do this one it compromises that that is then just for the pro sound you can't use it for the headphones the option with this one instead of connecting directly to the socket because we're using this socket we can make use of the filters so what we'll do is we're looking at this sort of layout and we're cutting just after r20 just cut that all together on the trace with a knife and just after r13 we we'll solder to that point but just after it we'll cut there cut in there and solder into this point and cutting here and solder into this side of the resistor and then in addition to that you are also soldering so2 and so1 down to those points so what we're doing is first of all we'll cut those two traces here and here and then we've got some connecting to do so r20 right side to so2 this point here with a wire going to so2 and this u6 r out at this point with a wire going to so1 and with that cut it basically skips all that and goes straight from the sound chip straight to those filters so you've got it's like the original one but you're using those filters so the sound quality is slightly improved you've got good reliable socket and it's switched the only downside no more headphone socket access so that's option two what i'm going to be doing is option three so with that one we are building a, a switch into the mix so this time we are doing a slightly different cut we want to be able to solder to the resistor to start the path so we'll solder here and solder here and our alternative is left out and right out in tiny little bit to cut there this one is a little easier we can just cut across there but what we're doing once we've we've got that gap so we can connect these two to these two points or we can connect these two to these two points so it goes from headphone mode or line out mode and you just swap between them so that is a diagram of a switch now i looked on amazon and this was the what was it, ebay but these were the smallest little switches i could find now it's got to be like this so it's a slide switch it's got to have six pins three on each side so the middle is your constant connection and the outer sides are like what you're swapping between so the constant connection is here and what you're you're swapping between from one side to the other is these two or these two and that's that's the diagram that i've got here so in the middle you've got the right side of r20 and the right side of r19 so for the right side which would be like just that row there you've got so1 and you'd have to have so2 on the other side the right side of r19 and 20 in the center and then u6 r out u6 l out so that will either link to the headphone amp or to so1 and so2 so that's what i'm going to do now the tricky thing with that is that apart from it is i mean it's quite a small area so it is a bit fiddly to solder it's actually where to put the switch that's where i came up with the idea of positioning it in here so that's just inside the socket and it means that it's out of the way you don't have to butcher any of the rest of the shell so this gameplay is getting modded uh, we're going to do the option three so it means that we will need to take out our batteries we're going to put a new switch inside here and i've got something else up my sleeve for that as well and we'll be able to use the headphone jack to swap between the pro sound and the headphones so that is what we are doing. So let's just move everything else out of the way and we'll get started. First of all, I'm gonna to need to dismantle my console. I'll just take out my 
cartridge and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tri wing screws and one crosshead screw to remove. So just carefully lift that off and then tip it upside down. Get all my screws out. Now this one has got a light kit in it. Now whether you've got an AGS 101 screen or whether you've got the original screen or whether you've got a ITA or whether you've got another one, there should still be room for what you want to do here. So if you've got your switch, that'll go there. We might need to mask this off a little bit with some capped on tape, but otherwise where that fits, there'll be enough clearance to to just about squeeze it in place. When it comes to drilling, what I've got is like a, a circular hole out of there. So the switch pushes through and then you bend over the pins so they fit a bit flatter. Um, so the size there is six and a half millimeters. It's in line with that bit and it's about halfway. It's lined up pretty much with, with that little circle there and this here. But you could have it a little further over. It's not really an issue. What you don't want to be is too close. You don't want this bump getting in the way. So we'll take a look at where that is going to go. I want it lined up roughly with that. So I would say a little further over. I'm going to put a dot there. Just lined up with that bit. You could use like a stepped drill bit, which starts small and then just gradually gets bigger. Um, but that only takes you like one millimeter at a time, so you'd have to do like maybe the, the seven millimeters. What I'm gonna do is drill a small pilot hole. I've got a, a 1.5 just to do a small hole first. I've also got my 6.5 to, to open it out. So, first thing I'm gonna do is just set up in my drill, carefully line up there. Slowly, watch out for your fingers. Straight through. So you can see I've got that little pilot hole in about the right spot. I'm gonna put my six and a half in there. Line up that with my original little hole and get going. When it goes through, when you pull it back out, make sure it's spinning. And that'll give you a clean cut. So, although you've got like this little switch with, with like all these little bits and, and then that bit that you don't need anything fancy in terms of trying to cut and file holes and things in this case. Whereas when it comes to this hole that was really tricky, what I used for that one was like I just poked with a needle file and then like shaped and shaped and shaped until it was just perfect. And that took a long time. Whereas this is, it's not too bad. So just clean out all the excess. And check all the pins okay and line it up, push it through so all the little pins come through. It should hold fairly well, give it a bit of a wiggle to get it in the right position. And then you see where I've done that, it's very, very slightly over. It should still be okay. What I can do is get some super glue and just put a little spot here and a little spot here. Carefully put it through, get it in position. Obviously, watch out because you don't want to glue your fingers. So, I'm just going to use some pliers to help position it. Make sure it's, it's fully flat down like that. Now, what I've got is a activator for my glue, so I'm just going to do that, but I'm going to do that off camera. The good thing about the activator as well as speeding up the process is it stops all those little white bits of vapour from landing. So now you can see I've got my little switch in place like that and it's glued so it's fairly secure. But I'm now on the bottom what I'm going to do where these six little pins stick up. You can use like a screwdriver or a metal tool like this, um, any, anything that's going to allow you to bend those pins out now. So bend that one there. And that side there, and you can get it fairly flat like that. And that, that one there, I guess you could do it with your fingers, but it might hurt a bit. That 
that one there and then that one just out to the side there and this one out to the side there and then try to get those as flat as you can get them so there you go we've got all six of those and they're sitting fairly flat so we can swap one way or the other now i'm basically going to have headphones this side pro sound this side we'll come back to that in a bit all of our soldering is on the reverse side of this so that will need removing at this point it's good to remove your power switch overlay unclip the ribbon cable you can see i've, I've unclipped that there and there so now i can just lift out the motherboard with the wiggle separate it so all of this can stay together for now and now we've got our motherboard so there's our amplifier there but there's no solder in that side all of our soldering is going to be on this side so we'll move the speaker out of the way for now and what we're looking at here is this area so what we're going to do is cut the trace so we're looking for r19 and we're cutting that trace and r20 and we're cutting that trace i'm going to use a sharp scalpel craft knife and um, i'm just gonna very very carefully cut here and about there now you don't want to slip and catch any other bits so just take your time you also don't want to damage the resistor so be careful you don't get too close to that Now I think I'm through there, so what I'm going to do is get my multimeter, set it so that it's got continuity on, so when these two bits touch, they'll beep. So if I go on here, I'm looking to check from there to there, and there's nothing, and from here to here. And there's nothing so that's all okay it's difficult to see the cuts but now those two points are no longer connected and those two points are no longer connected time to start soldering i've got a length of solder my soldering iron is an 18 watt antex with a, a fine tip what i want to do these points with some flux so we go on here 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 and also so1 and so2 up here okay so when it comes to wire I've got six different colours of wire, so I need to probably decide what I'm going to do with, with each. Just arbitrary really, but it's just so I remember what bits go in where <laughs> on my switch. I need to get my, my switch tinned and ready. Looks added to those pins as well. We'll go SO1. SO2. Now for this bit here, it's going to be easier to turn it around a bit. So we've got U6L out, just there, kind of tricky. Um, R out, but what we want to do there is make sure these two aren't, aren't bridged. So go on the far side of it. Just a little solder there, and then on the resistors, just be ever so careful with them because they're tiny little components, and you, you don't want to either bridge these two points or like just rip them off the board. Right. And then my switch on here, so I'll just heat each pin, get a little bit of solder onto the tip of each one. If you've got a bit much solder you can kind of wipe it off and then clean off the tip because you don't want big bumps 
on, on the surface there, particularly not on the, the middle one there. That's all right. But in terms of how long these wires need to be, so that is going all the way down to here. So I reckon eight centimeters should be fine for that. SO1, SO2 is going to be blue and green. We get green to the same size. Approximately six centimeters. So about six on those. And then we'll prep each of those two. Strip a little bit off each one first. So use a pair of wire strippers for this, but instead of like holding it down here, I find if I hold it up here, I get a more gentle pinch and gives me a lot more control when it comes to stripping. Makes it a lot easier. You're not trying to cut the wire, you're just trying to hold the plastic in place and then pull that out a bit. And I'm just going to slash a bit of flux on the end of each one. And then I find the easiest way to do this is if you get your actual reel of solder like that and melt the solder on. White, green, yellow and black. They've come up a little bit long I tend to just trim them on a tiny little bit like that so now we need to start getting all these attached so I'm gonna to go to these points first because they're the most delicate and then route them round to the switch again with the speaker just out of the way I'm gonna start with the hardest one you see I've got that one there and that one there so that's gonna go that way that's gonna go that way that's gonna go that way and that's gonna go that way oh 19 I was gonna have as red so because it's the resistor, I'm going to just trim a little bit off there. Probably the trickiest one. That's in position there. Then I've got R20, which was white. Again, I can trim a little bit off. That is a bit easier because you've nothing else in the way. Then I've got my R out and R out is yellow. I'm going to do that one. And then the L out is going to be black. This one's quite easy by comparison, but again, just need to trim the end of that wire off. Just get my red wire out of the way. Blue is SO1. Uh, now, because I've got this here, that's like where the buttons go, I'm going to change that. Reroute it that way. And then SO2 being the green one. If you feel like it's not getting enough solder, you could just put a little bit on your iron. Just reheat. I mean, don't pull it, but a gentle little pull. We'll make sure you're all right. Now at this point, it does make some sense to, again, get the multimeter and just check you haven't shorted anything. Yellow and the red, no beat. And the black and the white, no beat. So we're all all right, and I've not shorted those out there, so that's all okay. Uh, I may as well just check I've not shorted these two, so that's all good.
So now it's a case of trying to route them all to this switch, but also still give room to be able to lift it out. So on my switch now, the there, and the headphones there, looking at it that way, left and right, blue is on the right, so that's going to there. So all I'm going to do there is just cut that off, carefully strip the end. A little solder on it and that is going to here so just attach it to the switch this one's going around to there so I'm not actually gonna trim anything off that and again because You've got solder on both parts. It should secure quite well. So that's coming across. So yeah, that, that can get pretty much trimmed as is. Some solder. And again, you, you don't want to be raising it up too much. Just hold the wire steady. Make sure it's not convinced that's solid. That's better. solid. The red next, just being careful not to put any strain on on that point. So yeah, I think I'll just strip that one as is. Make sure that any rogue bits that you've stripped or any rogue bits of solder get moved out of the way. I don't want too much of a bump there, so I'm just going to re-solder it and try and level it off a bit. That's better. And there we go. Initial wiring complete. Now I've just got to try and route it neatly. Stuck those down there a bit. I'm going to need some tape over this bit. Right. Now the thing is, what we're going to have to try and do is get all of this lined up with this, <laughs> which is, is going to be kind of fiddly. But what we can do is we can kind of pretty much pop it out like that and just... So my switch is kind of out of the way there. What I want to do is get my ribbon in position. Make sure that's secured. And then everything else should just line up fairly easily. The speaker is likely to be a awkward bit, especially since we've moved it. Just give that a little bit of a prod. Let's try and line it up and get it in. Just notice my tape has come away slightly on that, so I'll get my three screws back in. And then I'll start tidying up my wiring at my leisure. So I've got this one here. I'll just turn it anti-clockwise first before I feel it pop and then just gently pop that one in and then at the other side I've got this one and then this one check on my wires all look okay they all look absolutely fine there so I can 
tighten this one up. I can add in my other bits. I've got my switch which goes in here. and my right and left bumpers we're calling them bumpers today i never quite know what to call them um, and then we've got our right and left triggers remember we're looking out from the back so the left's going to go on the right and the right's going to go on the left and now i can get my wires sorted so just make sure that that tape is in place there and then just holding it like this and pushing it in place it feels okay doesn't feel like anything's pinching i mean that's pushing a little but it doesn't feel like anything's pinching too much i suppose i can have a sneaky little peep In there and just make sure no wires are going where they shouldn't it all looks okay you know so line it all up and get it in and i'm just going to gently put the screws in i'm, I'm not going to fasten them tight at all just yet to finish off i'm just going to check everything's okay and just manually nip it up Being careful not to over tighten anything. Check your trigger buttons are still okay. Sometimes if you over tighten it, you, you can't turn them. Which still seems okay. Down here, it is pushing apart a little, but we'll have to just see how this goes. If it ends up like distorting my screen, I might have to have some second thoughts. But cross head for the middle one. Right. So we're almost ready to test. I'm just going to tidy everything up right now. If you've been watching my stories, you may have seen this little thing. OK, because the idea is, yeah, I've got switch in here to go from headphones to pro sound. But if my batteries are in place, then I've got to choose one or the other. I can't kind of swap it on the fly without taking out my batteries unless I use this little gadget, you see. What this does is it sits, it's got like a sort of eye profile. So that goes around the battery and sits like that around the switch. So that will allow you to switch on or off. And that's switched off. Keep my battery in position there. And just push it in. And that's now locked in position and will allow me to switch on or off without having to take out the batteries and it'll hold which is good and it'll be useful for when we're testing and that will still fit on over the top of it so now we are about ready to test first of all we'll check if it's still working the screen looks okay there's no obvious distortions or anything like that so we'll pop this in and switch on so you can hear there the, the speakers working now we'll load up our software right so with the speaker plug in the cable and it will mute 
and that is the same whether we're on Pro Sound. Mutes the speaker. And then what we can do is I'm just going to switch it back to headphones and switch on my speaker. So that's just through the headphone connector. If we flick our switch, So if you made it this far, thank you for sticking around and I hope you found it interesting and or useful. If you want to try these mods and need to buy the tiny switches I used or the super glue with the spray activator or any of the other nonsense I buy from there, go and check out my new Amazon storefront. If you buy anything there, I'll get a small commission and you'll be helping support the channel. I'll leave a link in the description. If you want to print out this little 3D printed switch adapter to go in the battery compartment, I'll be uploading a model of that to printables.com and I'll link it for you here if you want to get a free download. And as always, if you're interested in modding, go and check out Z Labs using the affiliate link I'll leave in the description. Their website is amazing. They carry a huge range of awesome products for modding Game Boy Advance and a whole lot more. And if you use my link, you'll be supporting the channel and I get a little bit of a kickback whenever an order is placed at no extra cost to you. In fact, it's even cheaper for you as you'll get money off your order if you use the code JOEBLEEPS at the checkout. Go for it. I would appreciate it. One thing I would like to add about this video because I noticed I didn't cover it when I was watching the footage back is that I'm aware that the amplifier chip inputs U6L in and U6R in seem like they might be good candidates for a pro sound connector points instead of SO2 and SO1 especially as it's all about bypassing that headphone amp to keep a cleaner signal. I'm sorry to say I did try this out during testing and it was disappointingly quiet as well as having a lot of excess interference so sadly that option wasn't a winner. It's a real shame <laughs> I got really excited about that one when I came up with the idea but you can't win them all. Anyway three different sound options for you here all with their advantages and their disadvantages as well as I suppose a fourth option of just leaving well alone and sticking with the headphone socket as it is but you know me that's not really my style is it you likely to try out one of these modifications which option sounds the most appealing to you let me know in the comments and if you've done some of your own tinkering with Game Boy Advance sound mods tell me all about that too and at long last so ends this epic tale of tinkering about with the Game Boy Advance and its different sound outputs I do hope you enjoyed it and I truly appreciate you taking the time out to watch it especially if you manage the whole thing if you know someone who might like it give it a share and if you want to subscribe and sign up for notifications I'd be super grateful the numbers are still steadily growing and it is motivating me to keep coming with the weekly content so this is joe bleeps signing off from the shed if you really want to see more of me after all that there's a few links here for you otherwise i'll see you in the next video bye in the cable and it will mute and that is the same whether we're on pro sound mutes the speaker and then what we can do is I'm just going to switch it back to headphones and switch on my speaker <laughs>